Join us for the very first CFL Live at London's Indigo at the O2, Sunday, August the 13th, with me, Coogan Cassius, and some very special guests, Eddie Hearn, Darren Barker, Johnny Fisher, and more. Tickets now on sale. So in the words of Eddie Hearn, you get up, you dress up, and you fucking show up. This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. We're at the TalkSport Towers here today to announce a huge rematch between July Zhang and Joe Joyce, uh, live on TNT Sport, September 23rd. TNT, Frank. it's the place to be. You're going to be saying that every week. <laughs> I've been told I've got to say that, yeah. Frank, before we come on to that rematch, you've just come off the uh, White and Jordan show with Simon Jordan. How was that? Yeah, it's good fun. A nice bit of banter. I enjoyed it. Did he try and stick it on you? He always puts it on me, Simon. I don't know why people say he don't, but it's good, it's good fun. I like Simon. Did you stick it back on him? Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's get into it. Um, why is this the right move for Joe Joyce to go immediately into this rematch? I think there's a couple of things. One, you've got to take your hat off for him for doing it. And I think what he's done, he's looked at the landscape. And if you, over the next six months to a year, you're going to get the mandatories ordered. One's already been ordered, which is a WBO yep. mandatory between um, Usyk and Daniel Dubois. And then after that, the other governing bodies will order their mandatories. And the WBO mandatory at the moment is, is uh, Zhang. And so if he wants to get that position back, then he's got to beat him. And if he gets it back, then he's, he's in a tr- tremendous position. If he were to, if he hadn't taken up the option clause, then the position would have been, it could have been waiting up to two years for a, for a, for a uh, voluntary defence if someone wanted to do a voluntary defence. So it, it's very difficult. So I get where he's at. And, he, and, and also, being a mandatory, you know the percentages for purse bids or negotiations are much better as far as the purse is concerned. So that's what he's doing. So he, he's... he's gambling on his ability and the fact that he can change his style for the next fight to get that belt back. This was touted for September 2nd. Why the pushback a couple of weeks? Uh, just scheduling, just t- TV scheduling, that's all it is. Okay, right. There was conversation about Tyson Fury potentially fighting July Zhang and Joe taking step-aside money. How close was that, Frank? It was very close, but Joe wanted to fight. And he, he, he's, him and his management, they had that right. And they, you know, that's what they decided they wanted to do. So that's it. Do you think he needs to put extra weight back on this time? I think he needs to, I, I don't want him coming in heavy and, uh, you know, being a big lump. He needs, he, needs, he needs speed, he needs head movement, and he needs, he needs to work on, on his fighting a guy who's a counter puncher. So he's got to make his, you know, he's going to have to work very hard. To, to get inside and, and, and do, what, do what he has to do. But for me, the, key, the big key to the fight is to take him into the later rounds. That's, and I think had he not had the eye injury, it may have been a different result. What have you heard about his eye? His eye's okay. Yeah. He, no operations or nothing. His eye's okay. Okay, that's good to hear. Well, a few weeks before that, we were obviously expecting a, another huge fight in the heavyweight division between... Alexander Rusik and your man Daniel Dubois. Now, no, it's not your fight. K2 Promotions won the, the purse bid, but we haven't had a, an official announcement from them. We're seven or eight weeks out. Do you know what's going on, Frank? Well, I hope it's going on because, as you say, they won the purse bid. If they don't, then we'll, we, we were the second in. We'll put it on. Hopefully, it will be on. I hope that's going to be the case. I don't see why it shouldn't be. Um, you know, it's a, it's a good fight, and I think it's a good fight for, for, for Daniel. And you're still having conversations, whether it's you or your son George, with Alex about trying to get that on TNT Sports? That, they, he deals with that, George is dealing with that. Right, OK. Right, continuing on with the uh, heavyweight division. So Tyson Fury took to Instagram this week. He said that there's going to be a show-stopping announcement. We shouldn't say that because it's not show-stopping. It's game-changing. It's bigger than show-stopping. It's going to be a game-changer. Seriously? I'm telling you, it'll be a game changer. The implications will be a game changer. Will that be in, in October in the UK, Frank? It'll be when, it'll be when you hear it. <laughs> but you can, you can reassure fans that he'll be out soon? He's going to be out. 
and we're going to announce something which will be a game changer. I'm trying to think through the division. And well, I don't you think too much, because you didn't get up this morning, you was late, was you laying in bed? So too much thinking, it knocked you out. I was, you know I was in the shower getting ready to come here, Frank. Yeah. <laughs> I had a voicemail off you this oh, morning. Oh, could it? Yeah, I, 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 talking to me while you was in the shower. <laughs> Perished right. default. Don't twist things now, Frank. Um, but, OK, well, listen, we look forward to it. A couple of weeks, you say you'll have that papered. Pardon? You'll have that papered in a couple of weeks, you believe? Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm quite confident, and uh, but I'm not going to get into it at all. All I'm doing, I'm looking forward to it, because I'm looking forward to how it's going to change the whole landscape of the sport. And also, I've heard you declare today that now Saudi Arabia are looking to do those fights in, in January. Rather well, that, than well that's not me saying that. that was, um, is it Amir? He, Amir he, Abdullah. Yeah, he said that last week. He said, we're looking maybe to now move them back to the uh, first quarter of 2024. So at present, still no one's received an offer for anything? Well, we've not received an offer, so I don't know about anybody else. Uh, you know, that's where they are, where we are. I'm sure you'd have spoke to Simon Jordan about this uh, when you were on Talk Sport because he declared yesterday that Tyson won't be fighting Usyk in Saudi Arabia at all. Did you question him about that? Well, he's entitled to his opinion. I oh, know Simon Jordan isn't the the be or end all within boxing, but to be fair to him, he did he was the one who put it out that Saudi Arabia are interested in these fights, which they clearly are. But yeah, he also went on on public record yesterday and said Tyson definitely won't be fighting Usyk in Saudi. No, I'm not even going to go there at the moment. With what, where it is, you, it will all come out fairly soon. Okay, and we're not going. Yeah, you know, and just and just for the haters. The reason it's not coming out is because we've got a press conference to, to here today for our man. So I'm not going to confuse it with, with with Tyson's stuff. We do Tyson's stuff separately. You're planning on uh, Dubois beating Usyk anyways, aren't you, Frank? Yeah, I am. You're People not... are very surprised with your confidence in that. Obviously, it's your oh, guy, but... Yeah, well, listen, we'll see. You're going to find out on the 26th, that's for sure. In Poland? In Poland. You're going to be ringside for that? I am. I'm so, I, well, I am if they give me a ticket. <laughs> I'm sure you'll get a ticket, Frank. Just to go back to um, Tyson Fury, a lot of um, notable figures in boxing have been quite vocal about him recently. So I'll read you some quotes from certain people. Johnny Nelson, Tyson Fury, get your head out your ass. Tyson Fury is the problem. Um, Carl Froch, Tyson Fury could be in a 12-round disaster against Usyk because of his inactivity. Tony Bellew says Fury is making really poor decisions. His reputation's being tainted. So you're getting big figures like that talking about him in no, that manner. Uh, no, big figures to who? Big figures in my eyes. But anyway, let's, so let's answer all them. So uh, was the first one was... Um, Johnny Nelson. Johnny Nelson, right. So, John, John, you may remember I was your promoter when Naz begged me to sign you all those years ago, and I wouldn't do it. And then Brendan come on, who was your manager, asked and trainer, begging me to sign you. And I did. Because I remember Naz and Brendan sitting in my house saying, come on, will you do something? And, it, and your mate at the time, I know you don't speak that much now, but I remember Naz at the time said, please, please, come on, Frank, please help me do something with him. And I, saw, and, I, and I remember it's the first time I ever used the phrase, if he was fighting in my back garden, I'd close the curtains. And the reason I've done that is because that terrible fight you had, which not boxing off the box on, on terrestrial TV against Carlos De Leon, which made, actually, made, I'm not sure, it, was like a, it, it, it weren't quite as, well, it was a little bit worse than the Acoli fight that Akoli fight, which was a snooze fest. So then, I kept, you know, we gave you fights and you've done well. For eight years, you held that belt. And then when it come down to the nitty gritty to defend it against a fighter who was hot at the time, knocking everybody over and was a really hot fighter and, and went on to win the world title, it was a mandatory defense, John. That was against Enzo Macanelli. And what did you do? You retired. So. Please don't. You, you're you, what, you, what comparing where you are, and I promoted both of you, you and Tyson. It's a, it's not even a, it's not even a, an issue. I mean, Tyson's sold more fights at one arena than you sold in all your all your fights combined. So please, we don't need your thing, John. You know, love you dearly, but stop talking bollocks. Carl Froch. Oh, okay. Carl Froch. Carl, I'm going to remind you now. 
when you met me in the polo lounge of the Westbury Hotel and brought down your financial advisor and we were trying to make the fight with Joe Kawasaki the fight everybody wanted to see except for you because all you kept talking about is he going to go up in weight is he going to go up when's he going up in weight because you didn't want to fight him Carl and you know what something else I just want to remind you is, do you know Tyson sold 94,000 tickets at Wembley He's not going to like that one. And uh, obviously Tony Bellew has been very vocal about Tyson. Oh, you know, the, the, the wisdom of Tony Bellin, forget about it. I'm not even going to go there with him. All I know is, that, you know, we were, when we made, like the Chisora, when Chisora was the, you know, the top rated, only bloke available in the WBC to fight him at the time, everyone said it's going to die a death. We sold out at Spurs. Tyson's next fight will be a sellout. Please, who gener who's got the most viewers out of all of them on social media? Out of who, Frank? Of all these fighters you're talking about. Well, you look at uh, Canelo, Tyson, Fury, Javon, no, Davis. About the let's talk about the British fighters. Who's got the most, most people? Tyson and Joshua. By far, t and Tyson's got more than him. Tyson, actually, is the real deal. He's not, he's not somebody who's lost, was it three or four of his last six fights? You know, he's a winner. So please, don't tell me the public don't like him because they tune into him. And I, I mean, I, I find that ridiculous. Anyone should say that. And, we're, and we'll see at the end of the day. We will see. The haters hate, hate it because of the narrative that's put out was, and is, who's been very great at putting it out is Tom Pepper at Matchroom. He keeps putting this stuff out on a regular basis. And I noticed last week when he was in America, uh, what's your name, Col Colm? Is it Colm? Or Who works for us, yeah. Works for you. I mean, I don't know if you, you, he paid to take him out there or what, but he, was, he must have done more interviews than anybody I've ever seen. He was doing at least four or five a day. And at the end, the narrative, you're brainwashing people, keep putting the same, putting this stuff out, and you never get to the truth on anything. Well, and in terms of what was he saying, Eddie? No, I'm saying what he, what he does, you know... Uh, but we can't, we're not going to make... He doesn't really want the fight Tyson Fury against Joshua. It's all nonsense and whatever. Not for him 60-40. What are you talking about? We don't want it. We haven't made the offer to you. No, we've already got other plans for him. Well, what are the plans? You didn't even know... And it, you never had anything signed with anybody. And you said at the time, you got you signed up. You got fights signed, signed up for him in August. There was nothing signed up for him. No one challenges this. And not that it bothers me. I couldn't give a monkeys about it. But I keep saying Tyson don't want to fight him. I mean, Jesus Christ, go and have your house on, on, if you want to make that fight, have your house on Tyson. There's only one person going to win that fight, please. What did you think about uh, Mauricio Suleiman, WBC president, coming out and saying he won't enforce any mandatories on Tyson? Well, uh, it's not that he won't, uh, he, he did order a mandatory, he ordered it between... Um, Wild and Ruiz. To and Ruiz, and, and, I, and, and I understood last week, what I spoke with what somebody who was close to it, said they were still talking. But you know what's distorted all this is the fact that they're all waiting for the skill challenge uh, fight in, or, or that big show in uh, December, which they're talking about now, they're putting back to the early part of uh, 2024. They're all waiting for that. That's why none of them are stepping up, because of the big money there. And I get that and understand that. And I absolutely understand that. But tell the truth. Stop bullshitting. What did you make of uh, Anthony, jo Anthony Joshua um, demanding that there's a rematch clause in for his fight with Dillian White? Do you know what? Who cares? I couldn't give a monkeys. I mean, you know, what, who cares? What title was it for? <laughs> Nothing. It's, it's, the, for, it's, for, it's a fight for the fella that Tyson beat, for the fella who's won, was it, two of his last, what, five fights, six fights? Who cares? Who cares? I don't care. But, but when you were, you know, offering the, the Fury Joshua fight for 60 40 at, at Wembley, um, a lot of the conversation from them was about, you know, we want to fight Dillian White and then Deontay Wilder. But it looks like obviously now the Dillian White's fight's collapsed. Well, they said they had fights signed. That's what they said. When we forget about the, that's gone. So the first one didn't happen to Wembley. The next one that we offered them, which is for September, and he's training to fight in August, so it shouldn't be a problem. He's not he's fit enough because he's training for a fight. They didn't want it. They just came out, well, Tyson's not serious. I mean, what is that all about? We give it, we sent it, uh, uh, sent it to him in writing. Frank, it looks like uh, Chris Eubank Jr. and Conor Ben's being targeted for September 23rd in Abu Dhabi. Well, if he's not licensed to box by the Boxing Board of Control, I can't see how Abu Dhabi, if they want to be taken seriously 
as a destination for boxes. Will, will we allow that to happen? And do you know something else? Who cares? I mean, you know, Chris Eubanks Jr. got badly, badly exposed by Liam. Liam Smith done an absolute job on him. He's not the fighter, he, he's, you know, he's not even the best at his weight in the country. And nor is Connor, by the way, he's not the best at his weight in the country. Everyone's going on like this is, I mean, the dad's right. The father's right. Senior, it's about their names. It's not about anything else, is it? Are they, let me ask you the question, you're in the boxing. Are they the two best at their weight in the country? No. No, they're not, so who cares? It's just a, and it's a, and it's a fight from day one that was ridiculous because of the disparity in weight, in weight, and what they had, and what one of them did by losing, or was it by having to do whatever he did by failing two drug tests? Who cares about it? I mean, it's. I, but I it potentially care. going on the same day, September twenty. Yeah, oh, that's. Do you know what? What are you going to watch? The t- you know, a, a fellow who's failed two drug tests against a fellow who got done in four or five rounds in his last fight. It's a no-brainer. Frank, what's the latest with David Adelaide and the Fabio Waldley fight? Uh, I'm meeting with David. I only, been, I only got back yesterday. I'm meeting with these people early next week and we're going to go ahead and we're, we'll work out. He wants to fight him. We'll make that fight happen. Okay, good. Um, Eddie, whilst he was in New York, did say that um, potentially for Dimitri Bivol, who he co-promotes, that Anthony Yard, that they might look at that and he said that he spoke to your son George about that potentially well, I don't know. I've not heard about that I've not heard about that but, okay. I, I, but at the moment all I'm interested in is Anthony fighting coming he's been out for a while having a fight and fighting for a world title Frank August 18th at your call uh, Dennis it's McCann fight, takes on yeah. Inuk Belusha good show isn't it it's a good, good show what do you think about that main event I like it I think it's a cracking fight you know, the, you know, you know, you know who the opponent is and it should be a great fight uh, the board did order uh, a fight between two guys you promote in yeah. Hamza Shiraz and Denzel Bentley. Yeah. Are you going make to make that next or potentially later, Frank? Well, the fight will happen. As we said, we, we want to make it happen. It will happen. But at the moment, um, as far as uh, Denzel, well, both of them are concerned, and Hamza, we're looking at a scenario with top rank that we've been talking about. I don't want to go into a lot of detail about it, but we're looking at that at the moment. So that may supersede that. Okay. Just to close off, we're going to play a little game. Go on. You ready? Okay. So, in order, we'll go for who would you go uh, for dinner with before we come on to who you'd fight. So, we'll start with who you'd go for dinner with out of these promoters. So, we've got Barry Hearn, Eddie Hearn, Ben Shalom, Frank Smith and Callis Owland. One to six. Right. Well... I've got to think what I'd, you know, what I, if I've got anything in common and where I'd enjoy it. So, and being out with the boys. So first of all is, well, looking at, looking at Tom Pepper and T-Boy, I don't think I'd want to be with them two. I mean, boys night out doing press-ups, arm wrestling, and somebody's not brought the baby oil and having a fight over that. I don't think I want to go down that. I'm not really interested in that one. Who's the others? Uh, you got Barry Hearn, Ben Shalom and Callis Owland. Oh, out of, out of them free Cali. Go for dinner with Cali? Yeah, I'm much rather do it then. That'd be some night you and Cali. What? That'd be some night you and Cali. Yeah, well, you know, listen, we're st- we're st- I'm still an old one, but we've got a little bit, little, little bit of life in the old dog. You've been to uh, meals with Barry before, of course. You used to work together. Yeah, a few, few, few meals with him, yeah. You went and revisited, though? No, yeah, I got fed up picking up the bill. Right, and then the, the last question on that, who's, who would you rather fight out of all of them? Who would I what? Rather fight. Who would I rather fight? So let's look at them. I've got, I've got, to, I've got to look at, see, what, what have I seen? I've seen old Tom Pepper in with the T-Boy. Uh, when I look at that, I think about, what have they done with them? Yeah, when you see, they've done some, some I see them doing some sparring together, you know, and, he, and the old... T boy looked like he was getting battered around the ring, so I suppose the easiest job would be him. Um, to be quite honest, looking at a pair of them, what I've seen in what I see him doing, I mean, they couldn't go two rounds in a revolving door. Okay, Frank Warren, thank you very much for your time. Why should everyone tune in on September 23rd live on TNT? Because it's a great fight, it's all on the line for, for Joe. He's got to get himself back in the position, he's got to 
got to get himself that belt back because if he gets the belt back, he's got a seat at the table. So it's 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 all or nothing for him, and he knows that. And you've got to, you know, you've got to take your hat off to him for stepping up to the plate and making that decision without anything in between. That's what he's decided to do. So it should be a really good fight. I really do think it's going to be a good fight. Thank you for your time. It's a pleasure. Join us for the very first IFL Live at London's Indigo at the O2, Sunday, August the 13th, with me, Cook and Cassius, and some very special guests, Eddie Hearn, Darren Barker, Johnny Fisher, and more. Tickets now on sale. So in the words of Eddie Hearn, You get up, you dress up, and you fucking show up. <laughs>